Around 15 miles south of the fair northern city of Manchester lies the Cheshire village of Alderley Edge. The village itself is nestled in the affluent Golden Triangle of Cheshire and it's home to the well-heeled and famous. The village itself is rather unremarkable unless you have the money to enjoy the various cafes and designer outlets. However, if shopping and celebrity spotting is not your bag, just travel a mile or so out of town toward the neighbouring town of Macclesfield and you'll come across an area which is surely a jewel in England's crown. The Edge as it is known, is an area of outstanding natural beauty which comprises 218 acres of historic woodland which once extended across the whole of the UK. The edge itself is a sandstone ridge which affords some spectacular views across the Cheshire Plains towards the Peak District. The National Trust website gives access to a number of walking routes through the area, albeit leaflets are usually available in the car park. These are recommended for highlighting the areas of interest, which are many and varied, although you could just wander around at will. Occasionally you may glimpse some of the local wildlife, although the critters were playing hard to spot on our visit. The area played host to copper mining from the Bronze Age right through to the 1920s, as is evidenced throughout the area. Indeed, the highest point on the edge was once site of a Bronze Age burial mound. The pinnacle of this mound was once used to site a beacon back in 1578, part of a nationwide warning system should the Spanish Armada choose to invade these fair shores. Emerging from the woodland, one comes out onto the edge itself, where you're presented with a breathtaking view across the Cheshire Plains towards the Peak District National Park. If you get bored of the natural wonders, you can always connect with the modern world and watch aircraft coming into Manchester over the city, or spot the Cold War icon, the Avro Vulcan, parked up at Woodford Aerodrome. Beneath the escarpment, Visitors have, over the centuries, taken advantage of the soft sandstone to make their mark on the rock. But one piece of graffiti especially deserves mention, as it links to one of the area's dark legends. The legend has it that a local farmer was taking his horse to market, when he was stopped by a man dressed in grey who offered to buy it. The farmer refused, but having failed to make the sale at the market, he met the man again on his return trip and he finally agreed to sell the horse. The man led him to a rock and with a magical incantation he opened the rock to reveal huge iron gates behind which lay a cavern wherein countless men and horses lay sleeping. The wizard paid for the horse, so I could get busy with the wizard paid for the horse and explained to the farmer that the slumbering army were awaiting the call to protect England in its hour of need. The farmer left without his steed and the iron gates closed, never to be seen again. Whilst the location of the wizard's cave remains a mystery, the wizard's well is well worth seeking out. Whilst weathered to the point of illegibility, the legend carved into the rock reads, Drink of this and take thy fill, for the water falls by the wizard's will. Legends, magic, beauty and mystery that surround the area inspired local author Alan Garner to write The Weird Stone of 
Brisinga Manor, which is set in this area. The area is currently maintained and managed by the National Trust, so if you're planning a visit and you're not a member of that veritable establishment, remember to take some change for the car park. And of course, don't forget the obligatory ice cream. <laughs>